Hi everyone, today I'm going to be looking at some of this planner page. This is from Johanna Basford's 2021 um, weekly planner and it's a very detailed page but it's got a repeating pattern on it. Now when I did this in the book um, I think it was a much smaller print. I think this has been expanded to make it bigger which will make it easier but I've seen this done lots of times and what I really like done with this page is a dark background and then lots of brightly coloured plants and fish. So I'm going to have a little go at doing some of it to sort of show you um, what I mean. Now with the background, I've often done it in, I did it in black Posca pen, um, which is a nice pink pen. Um, I'm trying to find one for you. Here we go. This is my um, black Posca. Um, and I'm not sure if I do it on this paper whether it will bleed through to the back. So I'm going to have a go with that later. But with the Posca it smudges if it's not fully dry. So I think it's better to go in with some pencils first and then, um, and then grab some Poscas later. Now I like brightly coloured these pages, really bright and cheerful and, uh, and lots of different colours. Um, and I think it just looks nice but because it's a repeating pattern I like to do everything the, the same colour so we've got this fish here for example let's say we do him orange we want this fish here the same colour and I think he's at the bottom as well I can't push it with my page up any further there we go the fish there so if my tripod gets in the way so that is how I would approach it so every little bit is then where it's repeated you do the same thing so that's going to be interesting for me because I'm not going to do all of it today for you I'm just going to do a few bits and pieces so I've got to try and remember what colour I use for what bit so when I go back to it I, uh, I don't forget so my first plan is to do some of these that look like leaves so I'm going to do those in green I know it's a bit boring going with green but we're going to use the emerald green I'm using my um, Arteza premium pencils today I've got this emerald green and I thought that would be a little bit brighter than the um, just a normal green should we say it's got a nice blue tone to it and I'm just going to colour it in a really hard blocky colour so I'm not doing any shading because I want it to really stand out from the uh, from the page I'm also because of the black background when when I do a background on a picture, I'm just seeing if you can see everything I'm doing, I very carefully pick the colours because um, with a black background you're not going to be seeing, um, it's a dark colour will just sort of disappear. Bright colours will jump out but dark colours will vanish. So you have to be very carefully plan very carefully in fact you do with any background say I was going to do a blue background which I'm now thinking might be better <laughs> change my mind um, I wouldn't want to do anything that was a blue that was really close to that blue so if I was using a sky blue say I could use a dark blue but I wouldn't want any light or mid blues because they just get lost so uh, you need to just plan and think carefully about what you're doing now you could also, of course, with a detail page like this, stick to a few colours. So you could just um, do, I'm just seeing where that repeats. It doesn't repeat at the top, it repeats at the side, the bottom. I'm going to, it repeats down here, look. I'm going to colour it in as well while I'm waffling on. So, um, if, so think about your background. You don't have to do your background first but planning it first is a good idea. I often find if you do a picture and you finish it, you do that foreground and you finish it and then you think that needs a background and then you look at it and you may have used every colour in your box which is great, there's nothing wrong with that, but then you, there's nothing left for your background. Like what am I going to do without making bits of my picture sort of vanish? Um, if you do a, use a, a, a um, pastel um, chalk pastels for a background that might not be so bad you can use them quite lightly so they don't um, sort of 
interfere with any of your foreground particularly if it's really bright like this it wouldn't uh, affect it but uh, pastel would be really difficult background to do on this page I think because there's so much going on you couldn't get in all the little spaces without having to go over the top of everything and although going over the top of everything is okay I'm just going to find the other two bits of leaf um, the problem with it is that uh, oh gosh someone's doing some strimming outside really noisily hopefully it's not too bad wow that's loud um, the problem with going over our teaser pencils for example with um, pastel is that you can smudge the pencil so you can end up with a big smudgy mess and you might like the effect of smudging some pencil out into your background I have seen some done um, intentionally not unintentionally and they're beautiful so it's okay but you just need to think and plan so uh, that's sort of the key really so I'm just colouring away happily here and as I say it's just block colouring I'm just going to sharpen up a little bit and I find it really relaxing sometimes just to colour really hard blocks of colour without having to think about shading and you could do this easily in a pen as well and I don't know how this paper holds up with a pen I'm going to sneeze <coughs> excuse me I don't know how the paper holds up with pens because I haven't tried it I think what we'd do is we'd do this little bit and then we'd do a little bit of black pen because we've got what we've got going on here is we've got this green um, we've got this sorry this black um, viney bit now how are we going to cope with that with a black pen go over it with a black pen it will just disappear so we've got two options we could leave it gone and just have the leaves floating in the air there's nothing wrong with that we could do it and then go over the these bits in a in a white pen or a green um, pen you know to sit on top of the Posca you'd probably need another paint pen so you can or you can get your green pencil this is what I'm gonna try and do a line of green to the side this is what um, I see um, Chris Cheng doing in her videos so all credit to her she colours just to the side of the stem I'm sort of doing it on top and to the side and then when we do our background we'll go around that green and hopefully the stem will show it's a bit of an experiment I'm not going to do all those little fiddly bits and I'm just going to do that on all of the others as well so uh, whoa sorry hitting my tripod with the book there we go I think one of my neighbours is um, strumming some of the grass in the... We've got a little parking spaces opposite our house. We've got our houses in a little square. And uh, opposite the square is a little lay-by so we can park. It's a public parking area, anyone can park there. And it means if you have guests they can park there, which is nice. And uh, the lay-by, there's a little grass verge next to it. There's a river just below. And... Uh, it gets quite weedy and uh, the council don't come and strim it very often although it could be them I haven't looked out sometimes they come and strim it but uh, other times they don't depends on the budgets I think and um, so uh, it just gets cleared back a little bit so that's those done now we're going to go in for these little tiny pieces so I want lots of bright colourful um, blobs for want of a better word so I'm going to grab a nice dark orange this is called vermilion oh dear I'm sorry I am shouldn't sneeze look how bright that is lovely and I'm going to look I'm not going to keep moving the book but I'm going to do that that one in all the other places that it occurs on the page I could zoom out I think it would be better it looks a weird angle though if I zoom out so I'm um, maybe I'll just zoom out a little bit whoops or in mm, you still can't really see can you there now you can see two two of them there and there okay so that was a bright orange now we're going to go the one next to it it's got a little dot in the middle I'm going to ignore that dot because 
it's going to be too detailed and I'm grabbing a pink for that one. This is called Crimson Red but to me that's a pink. So I'm going to colour over the dot and the circle just because there's so much detail. And again it's just a nice blocky colour. It's uh, nothing too, uh, too special and again you know using pens would be perfectly adequate for this. And I'm just doing all of them. There's four on this page where this picture repeats. On the larger version, there's this awful lot more. Um, now, um, a yellow I'm thinking next. I'm going to grab, this is a nice vibrant, it's called lemon yellow. And I'm going to do um, this really big one in the yellow. And again, I'm ignoring the patterning. That will just show through and look pretty and uh, doing it on all four again I'm colouring oh I'm in shot on this one but the other two will be out of shot I'm sorry as I said if I keep moving it's just going to make you dizzy but if I don't colour it now I'm never going to remember which colours I've used and I haven't been keeping them separate either which hasn't been very sensible I just grabbed them out it was the vermilion crimson red, lemon yellow and the emerald green. I did keep them out so that I can list them at the end. I think we need a blue. Um, I'm going to go for a peacock blue. It's a nice colour and just for this little blob here. Um, that doesn't appear on some of the others because it gets cut off by the edge of the page, this one. I think it's just there. You can't really see it. Okay, now um, a purple maybe, oops, I oh, would just drop it, did you? <laughs> this is the um, amethyst purple, it's pretty, it needs sharpening though. I'm going to do that for the other larger shape, just because it's such a pretty colour. Now this page can take a while, as you can see, but one tip I would give you is don't just do what I'm doing, I'm just concentrating on one little one is take this amethyst purple and do a few other bits so do this or one of these a bit of here and make sure you repeat it round like we are doing but if you use the same colour a good few times it speeds up the process saves you having to keep picking colours all the time but because I'm just demonstrating this little bit not going to do it that way. Okay, we're going around the rainbow really, aren't we? Um, let's get some red in there. We have got a, I think this, yeah, the tomato red. So I'm going to go over here, away from those other um, pinky red colours. What colour was that? Mm, I don't know. Was that red? Oh gosh, I don't know. It looks red. That was the vermilion, wasn't it? Now a pale colour. I think we're all quite bright. So I'm going to go in with this um, lavender, which is nice and light. And pop it over here so it's away from the purple, just to keep it looking a bit different. And I have to do that on my other ones as well. The other ones are finished because that last little circle is off the page. And last one, hmm, what should we do? Oh, I think a brown. Let's go for this one. It's quite pale actually, it's the camel brown. And we'll do that there. And here. Down there which you can't see. So we're gonna, I'm going to grab out my black and I'm going to zoom in and just show you how to do a little bit of the black background and uh, and then leave it. It's, there we go. So I wouldn't, I, I'm going to shake the pen up, I would do this right at the end. Don't do little bits. Although um, doing little bits is a little bit easier because it's less boring. Or well, some people like to do it first. Now I wouldn't. My reasoning for that is that if you colour over the line it shows up on top of the black pen so you'll get marks 
So if you do it afterwards, then you can cover up where you've gone over the line. Obviously you need quite a steady hand. I'm really interested to see whether this is going to show through the page on the back. I'll show you after. So I'm just gently going around this plant. This green is probably a little bit dark to show up too much, but it's okay. I'm not disappointed in my choice. I'm just thinking a lighter one might have helped just to demonstrate this stem a little bit better on camera. Now, with a pen, I tend to cover up on camera what I'm doing a little bit. But you can see how this lays down quite nicely. What I like about this compared to a felt pen or marker pen is that you don't get streaks if you're careful. Um, you sometimes have to do a couple of layers. I have had a streaky effect where I did quite a lot of detail with a pen like this. But normally you don't get these streaks. You, um, it covers quite solidly which I think is nice. I find when I use a marker felt pen I do get sort of streaky lines and I find it difficult to cover them over. I'm sure there's a technique and I'm sure some of you are very good at getting that right but for me I find it quite tricky. So I'm not going to go up to the edge of the things I haven't coloured yet because in case I go over the lines, like I said, um, it, uh, I don't want to colour over the Posca because that isn't the look I'm going for. So there's the bottom part. I'm not going to, I'm not going to colour anymore for now. I'm just going to leave it there so you can just see how the colours will jump out. But your colour choice has to be careful. I wouldn't want to colour, for example, in a dark brown or a very dark green or a dark blue. I don't really have a dark blue and certainly not a black. You know, you want to keep them bright and light so they jump out from the black. So you just have to have a little thought. I'm going to turn this over. I'm just going to move it across a little bit, give myself some room. So I'm just going to turn it over and that, oh, too low for you to see. There is the area of black pen. I can see quite a defined line down there. So it is showing through a little bit, but not massively. Um, not hugely. I do find that if I write, oops, let me put that back in shot. If I if I've done Posca and then I do something on the back, it can have some transfer onto the facing page. It's worth noting that that you might want to use some fixative, which does work with Posca. Although I've never tried it on this paper, I've tried it in um, others of Johanna's books. Um, it does fixative does work on Posca, but be careful because. I have had problems with fixative running. I used too much, held my book up at an angle and it dribbled down the page. Now that was with pastels and it dissolved the pastels and dribbled them. Now with Posca that might potentially do the same thing because it's paint. I don't know so you need to be very careful, keep it flat until it's completely dry. So I would put it outside on a sunny day, spray it and just leave it in the sunshine to dry for a little bit of time. So anyway, that's us done. That's just a little idea for you to get you started, really. It was very simple, but I hope it was useful. And uh, yes, the page will take a while, but just enjoy it. You know, enjoy the monotony of the small details, colouring it, or alternatively, go for just a very limited colour palette and just go for it, go, go for a few colours and that can make it easier to make your colour choices. So have fun and uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing some people's versions of this. I will finish this myself at some point and, uh, and pop a version up somewhere on, uh, on, on one of my um, socials, probably Instagram I suspect is where I usually put my finished pictures. So uh, you can have a look for that. But uh, it may take me some time. But uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was useful and that you enjoyed it. And happy colouring.